guys, I'm Teddy. Welcome to GameSpot Universe. Did you guys know that Marvel hired four of my fellow felines to play Goose the Cat in the upcoming Captain Marvel? That's supposed to be me on that poster, in the first cat-led MCU superhero film. I'm not sure why I didn't get a callback. I worked with a voice coach. I read all of the comics. Yes, I can read. And I'm easy to work with. I require just a few treats. And I don't bring any drama to the set. Unless, of course, the director calls for it. No matter how hopeless, promise me, now Rose, and never let go of that promise. I think you get the picture. Anyways, I'm gonna share with you everything that I learned about Goose's comic book origins from the hours and hours of research that I did. But before I begin, do me a favor and tap that subscribe button for me, please. My human will feed me treats. First thing you need to know, they changed the character's name for the movie. In the comics, her name is Chewy. Yep, like him. I guess Carol Danvers was a big fan of Star Wars. They scrapped that name because apparently human beings are easily confused when it comes to these things. The filmmakers love Top Gun so much that they swapped out Chewie for Goose, which I totally get. Top Gun is no Titanic, but it's one of my favorites. No, 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 there's two O's in Goose. Another big thing, Goose is not actually a cat. Goose is an alien, a flurkin to be specific. Flurkins are actually an alien species that look exactly like Earth's cats. Remind you of someone? The cat from outer space. I'm serious. Now, flurkins might look like us, but there are a couple of big differences. Sure, flurkins are adorable aliens, but in reality, they are super dangerous and terrifying. First, they lay eggs. Hundreds of eggs. Ugh. And if that wasn't weird enough, well, guess what? They also sport an entire mouthful of tentacles with multiple mouths and pointy fangs. In addition to the tentacles, they are actually living gateways to pocket dimensions. They can instantly teleport using these dimensions. Pretty trippy, right? But similar to us cats, flurkins have human intellect. We can both easily understand cognitive conversation. Are you still following me, human? Let's dig a little deeper into Chewie's backstory. Chewie made her comics debut in 2006 Giant Size Ms. Marvel No. 1. It was an unnamed credit, but she was in there. Danvers recalled a showdown she had with Sir Warren Traveler, and during the fight, she asked a stray cat for some help. She even asked if the cat had superpowers. Nice foreshadowing. Instead of showing off any superpowers, Danvers just threw Chewie at Traveler because he was apparently afraid of cats. But by 2014's Captain Marvel run, Chewie was officially introduced. Carol had recently taken the Captain Marvel name and left Earth to explore the universe. She decided to take Chewie with her, thinking that she was just your run-of-the-mill house cat. That's when she ran into Rocket Raccoon, who knew Chewie was no regular cat. Rocket revealed that Chewie was a flurkin and tried to kill her before she could lay eggs. Obviously, Carol didn't believe him. But as it turned out, Rocket was right. Weeks later, Chewie laid over 100 eggs. At the same time, the ship was attacked by an intergalactic hive that wanted to capture what they thought was the universe's last living flurkin. Luckily, they fought off the monster, and by the end of the encounter, Chewie showed off her mouthful of purple fang tentacles. Carol then dropped off Chewie and her 117 Fleur kittens at a nearby rescue center, where she planned to leave them. You know, since it's hard to keep a low profile when traveling with them. But Chewie teleported back to Carol's ship to join in her adventures. So what kind of powers will we see Goose use on the big screen? I don't really have a clue, but you should be prepared for anything. Also, make sure you hit that like button for me so I get a call from Marvel for the next movie. Thanks so much. 